Hello friends, welcome to Electronic Forum. Today we are going to discuss about Thevenin's theorem. So first of all, let us start with the definitions. What is Thevenin theorem? Thevenin theorem states that in any linear circuit containing several voltages and resistances can be replaced by just one single voltage source in series with a single resistance connected across the load. So from the figure A, it is clear that the network is linear containing several EMFs and resistances which is connected across the load terminal AB. Here RL represents the load resistance. So according to Thevenin's theorem, overall network can be replaced by a single voltage source in series with a single resistance connected across the load terminal AB. Here Vs represents the single voltage source which is also called Thevenin voltage and Rs represents the single resistance which is also called Thevenin resistance that can be shown in figure B. Next, how to Thevenize a circuit or what is the procedure for making Thevenin equivalent circuit? So first point is temporarily remove the load resistance whose current is required. Next point, find the open circuit voltage VFC across the load from where the load is being removed. The open circuit voltage is also called Thevenin voltage and is being represented by VTH. Calculate the total equivalent resistance across the load terminal after removing all the voltage source leaving behind their internal resistance if any. It is called Thevenin resistance which is represented by RTH. Replace the entire network by a single Thevenin source whose voltage is VTH and whose internal resistance is RTH. Next point, connect RL back to its terminal from, from where it was previously removed and finally calculate the current flowing through RL by using the equations I equals to VTH by RTH plus RL. Let us explain the Thevenin theorem with an example. So in order to solve any linear network by using Thevenin theorem, you may encounter three types of problem. When the source is independent, second when the source is dependent and last when the source is a mixture of dependent and independent. So from this figure it is clear that the overall network is linear and independent. Here only one source is present that is 12 volt DC. So in order to find the current flowing through the load, Thevenin theorem can be applied. Here we are having three loads RL1, RL2 and RL3. So in order to find the current flowing through the different load, we have to find the equivalent Thevenin voltage and equivalent Thevenin resistance RTH across the load terminal AB as shown in figure. Step 1. Remove the load and calculate the Thevenin voltage ETH and Thevenin resistance RTH across the load terminal AB. Step 2. Calculate Thevenin resistance RTH across the load terminal AB. Here the voltage source is replaced by short circuit. So from this figure it is found that the resistance R1 and R2 are connected in parallel. So its equivalent resistance is represented by R equivalent which is, which is being calculated by R1 into R2 by R1 plus R2 whose value is 83.33 ohm. Now the R equivalent is being connected in series with R3 and the Thevenin equivalent resistance RTH can be calculated by R equivalent plus R3 whose value is 173.33 ohm. Step 3. Calculate the Thevenin voltage across the load terminal. Here AB is the load terminals. Now applying KVL in loop 2 for the calculation of ETH. So ETH equals to I2 R3 plus I1 plus I2 into R2. Here I2 equals to 0 due to open circuits. So the resistance R1 and R2 are connected in series whose equivalent resistance is 600 ohm. So for the calculation of I1 can be given by the equation number 3 whose value is 20 milliamperes. And ETH can be calculated by putting the value of I1 and I2 in equations and will get the value of ETH as 2 volt. So RTH and ETH can be calculated. So we'll go for the step 4, replace the original circuitry by its Thevenin equivalent circuit and connect the load at its Thevenin terminal. Draw Thevenin equivalent circuit and it is seen that the polarity of ETS should be such that the direction of current will not differ from the original circuit. So in this figure, figure 4, the overall circuit is replaced by a single equivalent voltage source ETH whose value can be calculated earlier which is 2 volt and RTH 
is the single resistance whose value is 173.3 ohm which is connected across the load terminal RL which is removed earlier. So for the calculation of the load current can be given by the equation I load equals to ETH by RTH plus RL. Now we are having three loads RL1, RL2 and RL3 whose value is 25 ohm, 50 ohm and 100 ohm respectively. When RL equals to 25 ohm, IL1 can be calculated as 10.085 milliampere. When RL equals to 50 ohm, ILT can be calculated at 8.95 milliampere. And when RL is equal to 50 ohm, IL3 can be calculated at 7.31 milliampere. The above example which is discussed consists of only the dependent sources. So we'll Go for the another example where the dependent source are available. When the source is having only dependent sources, how to find the Thevenin equivalent voltage and Thevenin equivalent resistance across the load. So let us discuss another example which consists of only dependent sources. From this figure it is clear that we are having a dependent sources whose value depends on I. So we have to find the Thevenin equivalent voltage ETH and Thevenin equivalent resistance RTH across the load terminal AB. So step 1 calculate the equivalent Thevenin voltage ETH across the load. As from the figure it is clear that I equals to 0 because the load terminal is open circuited as there is no current flowing through it. Therefore the supply voltage whose value is 3I equals to 3 into 0 equals to 0 volt. Now as there is no current flowing through the circuit therefore ETH equals to 0. Step 2. Calculate the Thevenin equivalent resistance RTH across the load terminal AB. So in order to calculate the Thevenin equivalent resistance either apply a 1 ampere current source or 1 volt voltage source across the load terminal AB and calculate the Thevenin equivalent resistance RTH across the load. So here we are applying a 1 ampere current source across the load terminal AB. Now applying KCL at node 1 and we will get the value of VA as 1.2 volt. Therefore VAB equals to VA minus VB whose value is 1.2 volt. Therefore RTH can be calculated as VAB by 1 ampere. Therefore 1.2 by 1 equals to 1.2 ohm. So ETH equals to 0 and RTH equals to 1.2 ohm. Now we are going to verify the same Thevenin theorem practically. So the apparatus required is DC regulated power supply of 12 volt different type of resistances we are needed a bunch of wires ammeter and a voltmeter so from this figure it is found that we are having a dc power supply whose value is 12 volt we are having an ammeter whose maximum value is 15 milliamperes and a voltmeter whose maximum value is 15 volt so here we are having a three load rl1 rl2 and r3 RL3 whose value is 25, 50 and 100 ohm respectively. So now connect a 12 volt regulated power supply to the supply terminal. Positive lead is connected to the positive terminal and negative lead is connected to the negative terminals. Here we are having three different loads RL1, RL2 and RL3. So we have to measure a current flowing through the load resistance RL1, RL2 and RL3. So initially a load resistance of RL1 whose value is 25 ohm is connected across the load terminal AB and measure the current flowing through the load resistance 25 ohm. So here we are connecting a load resistance of 25 ohm. So to measure the current flowing through it, am positive terminal of ammeter is connected to the positive lead and negative terminal of ammeter is connected to the negative lead and turn on the supply I have found that the current is 10 milliampere. Now changing the load from RL1 to RL2 whose value is 50 ohm and measure the current flowing through it and the current is 8.6 milliampere. Now changing the load to 100 ohm and measure the current flowing through it and the current is 7.5 milliampere. Here is the comparison of the theoretical and the practical results of the Thevenin theorem. So it was found that when the load resistance is 25 ohm, the calculated value of current is 10.085 milliampere, whereas the practical value is 10 milliampere. So in that cases, we'll get an error. Error is nothing but the difference between the measured value and the true value. And the error we will get as 
जीरो पॉइंट जीरो एट फाइव मिली एम्पियर्स हियर द एरर इज नेगेटिव सो वेन द लोड रेजिस्टेंस इज फिफ्टी ओम द कैलकुलेटेड वैल्यू ऑफ करेंट इज एट पॉइंट नाइन फाइव मिली एम्पियर वेयर एज द प्रैक्टिकल वैल्यू इज एट पॉइंट सिक्स मिली एम्पियर सो द एरर इज जीरो पॉइंट थ्री फाइव मिली एम्पियर इन दैट केस इज द एरर इज ऑल्सो नेगेटिव सो वेन द लोड रेजिस्टेंस इज हंड्रेड ओम द कैलकुलेटेड वैल्यू ऑफ करेंट इज टेन पॉइंट थ्री वन मिली एम्पियर एंड द प्रैक्टिकल वैल्यू इज सेवन पॉइंट here the error is 0.19 milliampere here the error is positive whenever we were talking about the error one more quantity will comes into the picture and that quantity is known as correction factor so what is correction factor the amount of quantity that must be added or subtracted from the measured value to get the true value is called correction factor here the measured value is called the practical value and true value is called the theoretical value so when the load resistance is 25 ohm it was found that the practical value is 10 milliampere whereas the theoretical value is 10.085 milliampere so in that case the error is negative so that error must be added to a practical value in order to get the true value and the same will be applicable for the another resistance which is 50 ohm and 100 ohm also so thanks for watching and please subscribe